Today we're going to talk about how we can speak more sweetly to each other. You may find that you really miss some people because you're not able to see them, but you're really getting tired of other people because you're stuck in quarantine with them. Uh, I came across an old love letter that I wanted to share with you. I will give you the edited version, but it is very funny, and my husband doesn't even know that I'm going to be sharing this, so that even makes it more funny, right? So this was written July 26, 1998. Dearest James, and I go to the end here, words cannot express how much I love you and how highly I think of you, but I will continue to try to tell you. You are the man of my dreams, the man I want to grow old with. See, I wrote it with my own hands right here. The man I want to wake up with. I love you, love the future Mrs. Arlene Pelicane. And you know, we have been married over 21 years now. And when we were first married, we spoke very sweetly to each other. And while we were dating, we called each other sweetheart, darling, sweetie, love. We had, uh, we, Dated when we were dating we were in grad school together, but then we were separated by taking different jobs in different states And so we'd write letters to each other and the post person the post office worker loved us Because every time he wrote me a letter, which was almost daily It wouldn't just say to Arlene Co. That's my maiden name wouldn't just say that. No, it would say like to sweetie pie at blah blah to my love to the princess fair like it always had this other title i know my kids are like oh my word this is so embarrassing right now okay so what's the point of all this we when we're beginning we talk so sweetly to each other right and remember how i wrote like oh i look forward to waking up with you well for those of you who are quarantined with your loved one you're not only waking up with them you're seeing them at noon <laughs> three o'clock five o'clock seven you're seeing them around the clock so I just want to give a few tips today for those of us, we are quarantined with people and how can we get along better? How can we talk sweeter to each other? And also to give tips to those who are quarantined, but you're alone and it has been more of a lonely time and you really wish there was someone to talk to. I hope to give a word of hope for both groups. Now for those of you who are quote unquote stuck at home together with your family, your roommates, your best friends, etc. You know, for those of you in a family, I just want to encourage you, take out those old photo al albums. Look through those old photos on your phone or on your computer. Go five years back. What were you doing five years ago this month? And relive some of those memories and have some of that sweetness return. If you have any of these girl things, any old love letters, you can take those out. That's always fun. Break out that wedding DVD or VHS in my case. Some of you reel to reel, like let's have a big party. But the idea is take a moment. You've seen each other a lot. It's easy to take each other for granted. Take a step back and just remember. And that could be going through an old letter. It could be going through an album and just cultivate appreciation for each other. For those of us who are used to sending our kids to school, and all of a sudden, there's no school to send those kids to. <laughs> You're thinking like, oh my goodness, my child is on my very last nerve and they are just pouncing on that last nerve. Let us remember as parents that children are such a blessing from God. Psalm 127, three through five says it this way. Children are a heritage from the Lord. They're not an irritation. They're not an annoyance. They are not a burden. They are a heritage heritage, a legacy, a gift from the Lord, offspring, a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. Arrows, what's that all about? You know, when you shoot an arrow, that arrow goes where you can't go. It goes further than you can go. And as parents, when we have children, we're raising these kids to be shot out of our homes, out of quarantine, out of our homes, to do things, to become things that are way beyond us. So remember, even when you're in close quarters together, don't waste this time as a family. How many times have you said to yourself, if we only had more time, or I wish we weren't so busy? Well, guess what? You're not busy now. You don't have practice to run to. You don't have a game to see. You have disappointments that you're mourning, but you also have an opportunity 
to spend time with your kids so that when they do launch out as arrows, you are more invested. So use this time, parents, to invest in your kids, to tell them what's important in your life, to tell, share stories with them. Make this a valuable time. And then our mouths. What does it say in Ephesians 4.29 about our words? Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So ask yourself while you're quarantined, are your words building up or are they tearing down? You might say it this way, are they sweet or are they sour? sour? Sweet or sour, okay? So sometimes it's okay to have a little bit of both, but let's lean towards the sweet, okay, my friends? And in this verse, it says, according to, according to their needs. So build people up according to their needs. Well, how do you get to know people's needs? You study them, you find out. You know, if we were to ask, what does your spouse need right now? What does your mom need right now? What's your dad need right now? What does your son, your daughter, niece, nephew, do you know? And sometimes we're so busy, we're out of touch with what our family members really need. So this COVID-19, it's a blessing in disguise in this way. It allows you to slow down, to observe your family members, and to figure out what their needs are. And once you can see, wow, this one really needs affirmation. This one really needs some guidance in choosing a college. This one, oh, they've, they've really got some weird ideas a, a, about marriage, whatever it is. Like it gives you time to assess what is the need of my child, of my spouse, and how can I build them up according to that need. And now all of a sudden, all this monotonous time has purpose. All of a sudden, every day, which kind of feels like the day before and the day coming, all of a sudden you have purpose because you're studying your family members. You're trying to figure out what do they need and how can I benefit them? How can I build them up? Well, maybe you are on the flip side and you're alone and you're not allowed to have visitors and you're practicing the social distancing and you wish you did have someone to study and you wish you did have someone to build up. And we have Psalm 145, 17 to 19 to bring us that comfort in that time of loneliness. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. So know that even if you feel like, oh man, I miss my coworkers, I miss being out there, I am getting really tired of just being alone and I've taken my walk and I've done my things and I'm still bored, just know God hears you and that this can be a time of, a special time between you and Jesus where you don't normally have this time together. You know, we are familiar uh, with that Philippians 4. We've talked about rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And that's 4.4. 4. And we're also familiar with Philippians 4.6, which really comes up a lot during coronavirus. Do not be anxious about anything, but with thanksgiving, pray about everything, right? But you know, right in between that is verse 5 of Philippians 4. And it says this, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. And I just want us to camp there for a second. So we know rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. So not your anger, not your irritation, not your complaining, not your sullenness, your gentleness. That's what we're supposed to let come out, our gentleness. And why? The Lord is near. The Lord is near us, so we're going to be gentle. We want gentleness when we're poked and when, when we're stuck in four walls with someone. We want gentleness to be the thing that comes out. It's described this way in the Jeremiah Study Bible. Gentleness means being reasonable, not so concerned with unimportant matters that a person fights over the non-essentials. Whoa, when you're quarantined, right? This is, let's, let's get a hold of this. Gentleness means being reasonable, not so concerned with unimportant matters. She had this, he got the bigger one. I don't wanna do my homework, go clean up your, you know, you, you know what it's like to be quarantined with a family. Not so concerned with unimportant matters that a person fights over the non-essentials. And also as we're alone, that our gentleness, that we're not concerned with those un, the non-essentials, but we're thinking about what's really important. So if you're quarantined with somebody, be sweet.
Be kind. Pull out the love letters. Remind them how glad you are, if you're going to be stuck with anybody, that you're glad to be stuck with them, right? If you have children, they're a heritage, they're a blessing, they're arrows that are going to come out of your home to, to influence uh, way beyond that you could. Use this time to bless them. Be sweet. Uh, on my friend, author Kathy Lips, uh, uh, online, I saw something that she wrote that I liked so much. Be the kind of person you would want to be quarantined with. Be the kind of person you would want to be quarantined with. And if you're alone right now and you're watching and your house is just eerily quiet except for the TV going, you know, if you're alone, just know you're not alone. God is with you. God is near. Let your gentleness be evident. And let us as a church know if you are lonely, you need a phone call, there's a place online where you can put your prayer request. So just let us know, I'm really lonely, I could really use a phone call. If someone could reach out to me, that would be great. Please do that. Let people know that you're anxious to hear a human voice on the other end, and we would love to be that for you. So today, be sweet, be gentle and know that God is with you. He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you. We are going to get through this. We're gonna praise through this. And the people that we're quarantined with, we are going to come out on the other side liking them even more because we've taken the time to build them up. And if we feel lonely, we're gonna reach out. And, and for those of you and families, think about those that you know that are single, they live by themselves, and send them a note today call them, do something to let them know that you're thinking of them. Thanks so much. God bless you.